Hi and welcome. Today we'll learn how to draw a simple trajectory path based on the initial velocity and the rigid body properties of the game object. And we'll be using a line renderer to basically draw the trajectory path. So it'll look something like this when you're finished. We'll have a capsule. When we press the spacebar, you'll see the trajectory. And when you release the spacebar, the game object will travel through the trajectory. Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. Now to draw the line renderer path, you'll need positions at different times. So we'll be using this equation s equal to ut plus half at square, where s is your distance, u is your initial velocity, t is the time, and a is the acceleration, which in our case will be gravity, and t is time again. We'll just be incrementing the x and z position based on the time difference between each point, and we'll be calculating the y position using that equation. So let's go ahead and add a line renderer first. So let's click on add component on the game object where you want the trajectory to be seen. And let's create, let's add a line renderer. If you don't have any materials to assign to the line renderer, then just right click on the project window, click on create material. So you'll have a new material. I have a material here, so I'll assign that to my line. So we'll just go to the line renderer. You'll see the material property. Just drag and drop the material and it's assigned. So I don't want a wide line. So I'm going to just drag this and bring it somewhere near 0.3. Yeah. And I want my line to thin out in the end. So just double click to place a point and reduce the size. Now to give you an idea of how the line renderer works, you can just set the size to maybe five and press enter. So you can see there are five points in my line. The initial starting is at zero, zero, zero. So if I set the first position at one, one and one, so you'll be able to see a small line growing. So my next position will be two, two and two. So yeah, so this will be three. Okay and this will be four. So if we go to the scene, you should be able to see a line like this. It's basically a line based on the points that we have given here. So if you're able to compute the points in the trajectory, then we'll be able to make a smooth graph out of it. So now let's go ahead and add a script to it. Let's call the script path projection okay and uh, let's just create and add now that my script is assigned i can just disable the line renderer i'll enable it when we have the points so let's open the script for editing so we don't need these two using statements okay and the first thing that we'll need is the line renderer itself so we'll say line renderer and let's call it lr then we'll need the rigid body and let's call it RB. Then we'll need a vector three, which will be my start position. And then I'll need a vector three, which will be my start velocity. Next is we'll need a float, which will be your initial initial force okay so we have a start position and the reason we need the initial force is to calculate the start velocity because we'll be applying a force on the rigid body let's say we'll be applying something like 20 okay and then we'll also need a float initial angle which is equal to maybe 30 degrees so this is not required if you know the direction of your velocity so i'm going to apply the force at 30 degrees in the x-axis so that the object will go in the upward direction first and then fall down now in our start let's say lr equal to get component line renderer so that's that Next, RB equal to get component rigid body. 
so that's also done now to rotate the initial velocity in the direction of throw will also require a quaternion so let's go quaternion rot okay and in our start we can just say rot is equal to quaternion dot euler and here we can give the angle in the x-axis which is your initial angle comma zero comma zero now we'll not be calculating the start position and start velocity in this start function we'll do that when we are going to enable the line renderer in the update we'll say if input dot get key down and we're going to say key code dot space that is when the space key is pressed down we are going to call a function which will be let's we'll say draw line okay and if input dot get key up we're going to say key code dot space and when the space key is released we are going to say rb dot add force and your force vector 3 is going to be your angle rotation multiplied by initial force which will be multiplied by your transform dot forward so we'll be applying a force in the forward direction whose magnitude will be equal to the initial force you might have to give a bracket here so that this becomes a vector 3 so you can only multiply a quaternion to the vector 3 you cannot do the other way around you will get an error here so you cannot do vector 3 multiplied by quaternion that is that is not possible and so you will have to do quaternion multiplied by vector 3 so this will rotate the vector 3 by the angle that you specified in the quaternion so now we need to create a function of this name let's just press command dot and say generate draw line now in the draw line function the first thing that we have to do is, is to enable the line renderer so we'll just say line renderer dot enabled equal to true and then we'll set the initial position which is a start position equal to transform dot position then we'll say start velocity is equal to rot that is my rotation multiplied by initial force multiplied by transform dot position okay so this will be my initial velocity but this will be the velocity with the initial force but this is not taking the mass into consideration so if you have a unit mass it doesn't matter you can use the same equation as it is but if you have a greater mass then you need to compensate the velocity based on the mass so you'll have to divide the velocity by rb dot mass so now we have a start position and the start velocity so let's set the first position of the line renderer. So L over dot set position and you'll just say zero comma the position which is nothing but start position. We can choose the number of points in the line renderer and the time between each point. So let's create two variables for that. So let's say float i equal to zero. This will be the index of the line renderer. Then we'll need float number of points, which will be say 20. Okay. And then we'll say float timer. This will be the time difference between each point. So if you have, if you want a smoother curve, you can have something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. If you're okay with a distorted curve, then you can go ahead with a bigger value. So I'll set it to 0.1f. So now I'll set this the first position where my i is equal to zero. So I'll be using i here. So what's the error? Cannot convert 
okay yeah this should be an int this will be the index i'm sorry it should not be a float it should be an int now what we can do is we'll start a for loop so we'll say float j equal to zero and for the condition we'll be just checking if i is less than lr dot points count sorry position count and we'll be incrementing j based on the time between each frame that we have specified so this might be a little different for loop for you because the condition is a different variable and the increment and the initialization is also in float because we'll not be using this index j is not our index j is basically the time that has elapsed between each point so now we need to calculate the position of the point so since we already set the initial position there will be one position less so i should be less than lr dot position count minus one now the first thing that we have to do is we have to increment i because we already set the zero position so now i is equal to one and we also need to set i equal to zero in the initial case because every time when we are calling draw line it should start from the zero position now to get the position we can just say vector 3 to be line position which will be your start position added with your timer that is nothing but j multiplied with start velocity sorry not the start position the start velocity so if you are in the transform dot forward direction then it will just multiply the, the time taken between each of the position and increment that so to get the x and z position the y position will be affected by gravity so we need to calculate the y position so let's say line position dot y is equal to start position dot y plus now i'll be using that equation ut plus half at square so in our case u is the start velocity and since we are calculating in the y direction start velocity dot y multiplied by j which is our time and then plus 0 0.5 which is nothing but 1 by 2 multiplied by gravity which is physics dot gravity and since we are calculating the y value it is gravity dot y now for time square you can just multiply j twice okay now we have the y position also so all that is left is to set the position so we can just say lr dot set position and we're just going to say the index which is nothing but i comma line position so now everything is set the only thing that is remaining is to disable the line renderer when the base key is released when the actual force is applied so we'll say lr dot enabled equal to false uh, we forgot to set a small thing that is lr dot position count is equal to number of points so number of points also will be int okay in the start velocity i made a mistake it is set to transform dot position but it should be actually be transformed dot forward and based on my testing it should be minus 30 degrees and not positive 30 degrees because my positive 30 degrees goes inside the ground so it should be negative 30 degrees for the player to jump in the upward direction so i made those two changes now let's go back to unity and hit the play button and now if you press the space bar you can see the trajectory and now if i release it you can see that the player is following the trajectory you can set the time between each curve to something like 0 0.05 and set the number of points to something like 250 and you will have a finer curve but you can decide on the length depending on the number of points and the time now you should be able to create your own script for trajectory and for some reason if you need this script it is available in vinix studio and the link is there in the description thank you and see you in the next tutorial
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.